my name is Casey Fremstead and I'm the Children, Youth and Family Ministry Director at Holy Trinity and I just feel so honored to welcome you to worship on this gorgeous September day. It's been a busy couple of weeks for all of us staff at Holy Trinity as we prepared for kickoff which was so fun. We loved getting to see you all this past Wednesday and Sunday and now we're kind of starting to get into the swing of things. So we started a new sermon series last week on the Ten Commandments, starting with commandment number one, which God tells us, you shall have no other gods before me. And this week we are digging deep into commandment number two. So stay tuned for the sermon a little later to hear more about that. Uh, but thank you so much for making church a priority in your life and just for being here today. We're so thankful for you. So please join us as we begin worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A reading from Mark, the ninth chapter. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The word of the Lord. Well, greetings to you, especially our online worshiping community. This is valid. This form of worship is valid, and wherever you are, wherever you're from, it is good to be gathered together today. Grace and peace to you from our holy Trinitarian God. Amen. Today we continue our sermon series looking at the Ten Commandments. Uh, now you might have a bookmark in your Bible. Maybe you have a plaque somewhere in your house where it's got the Ten Commandments. Maybe you have some sort of memorabilia where there's a list of Ten Commandments in your own home or in your own Bible. And so I'm going to invite you to think about that and maybe even to go and get that because you may be curious after I tell you that not all lists of the Ten Commandments are the same. I know, I know. I thought, I thought it was just the Lord's Prayer where Lutherans go a little longer, Catholics end a little early. We thought, well, you know, there's just a little difference there. And even though Bible translations are a little differently, you'd think that we could agree on the Ten Commandments. But they're actually different according to your faith tradition. So, I'd like you to look at a table with me. I've got it here, we're gonna show it here on the screen. Uh, you'll see the middle column here. So, Roman Catholic, Lutheran, and Eastern Orthodox. That's where we're at. Uh, that's our list. And the list, this list originates, and here's the thing, it goes all the way back to Augustine, a fifth century bishop. And you'll notice, if you get to the bottom of the list, number nine is you shall not covet your neighbor's, your neighbor's house, and number 10, you shall not covet all their other things. So we've got two you shall not covet, numbers nine and 10. But when you look at the other lists, the Jewish list, you shall not covet is just number 10. And then this Reformed Anglican other Protestant tradition, which you'll probably have on a bookmark or Christian memorabilia or something, only has you shall not covet as just number 10. So what's up with this? Why is that the case? Well, if you look to the Jewish list on the left, you'll see their first commandment isn't you shall have no other gods. It's I am the Lord your God. That's the first commandment. And then... You know, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. We kind of take that as a preface as Christians. We take that as a preface to the first commandment. But uh, our Jewish siblings take that as the first commandment. And then their second commandment is you shall have no other gods, which is our first. 
But there's a large group of Christians on the right hand column there, the Reformed, Anglican, other Protestant traditions, who split up this second commandment. Uh, and you'll see this in the third column. So we share the same first commandment, you shall have no other gods, but then something's different with number two. We see the second one different. Their second commandment is you shall not make for yourself a graven image. Now, Augustine, like I said, that we think about when we look back to our list of ten, back in the fifth century thought, you shall not make for yourself a graven image that's basically the same thing as you shall have no other gods. So he grouped those two together. That's kind of uh, in parentheses, if you will, for the first commandment in the Lutheran tradition. But for the Reformed Anglican and other Protestants, they make that the second commandment, and then, like I said earlier, they combine the covet ones at the end. And they base their list, it's not a recent thing, they base it all the way back from Origen of Alexandria from the third century. He gave them this list, and they've been using it ever since. So, if someone asks you, you know, what's the second commandment, or what's the fourth commandment, or what's the sixth commandment, you can respond <laughs> by asking them, well, according to who? Augustine or Origen? And then they'll probably be baffled and say, what? What are you talking about? And then you can tell them about these different lists. <laughs> it can be an educational opportunity. But here's why it's tricky. So, wh so why, why is it listed this way? Why is it tricky this way? Well, the Bible itself doesn't number them. You may think that's funny. It says the Ten Commandments, but it's just a long passage of words where it doesn't say number one, number two. It just has the words in a row. And we think in our day and time, we see Bible verses. Well, verse, the Bible verses were actually added into our scripture passages later on. So they weren't original to the most original written manuscripts. They were added later to help people find particular passages. So we're, we're not going by verses either. So I'm going to show you why it's a little bit confusing because this each version of these Ten Commandments comes from the same passage, but the passage needs to be simplified a bit. So I'm going to read to you from Exodus chapter 20, and this is verses 2 through 7. Listen up. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an, an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. So folks, this is why it's tricky. Because those six verses of the Bible are six verses that religious leaders have struggled with for, for millennia and how to figure out where one commandment ends and the next one begins. Those six verses have been broken up into two commandments one way or another, somehow, some way, and that's why the numbers are different. Because people interpret those six, the, where the breaker is in those six verses differently. But for our purposes today, all of this is a segue to our sermon today. For us as Lutherans, we join Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholics today in looking at the second commandment, which we name as, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. So I'll say this. I remember when I was growing up, maybe you do too, and I understood this to mean, don't swear. And I knew from other kids in the playground what those swear words were. Those words that I shouldn't say. And if my parents caught me saying them, I was afraid that they would wash out my mouth with a bar of soap. And so, I didn't swear. And I still don't. Unless on very rare occasions. 
But I have to say, I have to be honest, this commandment is about more than just don't swear. It is protecting God's name from being used in a way that isn't faithful and true to God. I'll tell you more. For instance, if God's name is associated with something, it's better, it better be with what God hopes that it's associated with. So this is, this is a stark warning not to twist God into something that sells our own personal agendas. We can't make decisions about God or God's church based on what we think will attract other people to our churches, to our businesses, to our political persuasions. We need to be very careful that we're not putting a Christian or a godly label on things, on the things we do, on the things we say, so that they might be twisted in a way that makes people coerced into agreeing with us. That just may be using the Lord's name in vain. And if you ask me, when I think about this verse, this second commandment, it invites us into a posture of our a posture of humility when it comes to our faith confessions because Instead of using God to justify what I already believe and therefore you should believe, we surrender to God. And we pray to learn what God wants me to believe. The second commandment, in my opinion, invites us, almost commands us into a posture of humility, of reverence. So Martin Luther put it this way. We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, practice witchcraft, lie, or deceive in his name. But then Luther transitions into thinking about this commandment, not just in what we shouldn't do, but in what we should do, in a positive lens. Instead of saying uh, what we can't do, this commandment paints an implicit picture of what we ought to do. So Luther says, we should not fear, or we should fear and love God, so that we do not curse, swear, practice witchcraft, lie, or deceive by His name, but call upon Him in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. So I'd like to end with one more Bible nugget for today. Last week, we reviewed briefly the story of the Exodus from chapter 14 of Exodus. And if we rewind back to Exodus chapter 3, there's a story of the burning bush, God's calling to Moses, saying, I've observed the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cry. God wants to free them. And in chapter 4, verse 22 and 23, the Lord says to Moses, Say this to Pharaoh. Thus says the Lord, Israel's my firstborn son, and I said to you, let my son go so that he may worship me. What's interesting is the so that. Here, God gives justification for letting these people go. God is specific in why they need to be free. God describes what God hopes for because of their freedom. Let them go so that they may worship me. God freed the Israelites, yes. God freed them from oppression, yes. God was sure, however, to articulate that their freedom was not just from something, but also for something. Their freedom was so that they could worship God. So these Israelites left their human master of Pharaoh so that they could move into a relationship with their God. We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, practice witchcraft, lie, or deceive by his name, but call upon him in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. Today, we too 
celebrate our freedom, not just from responsibility, but for something today too. We are free for worshiping God. This is taking God's name the right way. For the second commandment, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain, means more than simply don't swear, or you're going to have your mouth washed out with soap. But it invites us to use God's name the right way, in humble reverence, in praise and thanksgiving, in worship. So praise be to the God of the universe who frees us so that we can worship him. Amen. I am surrounded on every side, can see the light of day. I am persuaded beyond all hope you won't let go of me. I stake my claim on every word you say. You will not be late. I will sing through fire and thunder because you are on my side. I trust you with my life. I know my story, it isn't over, even against all odds. You are a faithful God. You're a faithful God. The darkest of weather. Our Father, our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Hello, my name is Karen Taylor, and on behalf of all of the staff here at Holy Trinity, I want to thank you for joining us for worship this week. Here at Holy Trinity, we invite you to share God's love with all people from one generation to the next. Here are a few ways where we can help spread the mission this week. Well, if you joined us last week, you saw that it was our kickoff week. Part of that not only was that fun video, but it was also a new newsletter format. Now we've been using the, this e-newsletter, this weekly e-newsletter called the HTLC Connections for over a year now. But what's changed is that we are using a new platform to email it to you. So if you've missed it or you accidentally unsubscribed, uh, make sure that number one, you have the email office at holytrinityonline.org in your contact list. That comes from Jamie Bezik, our office manager. And that way, hopefully it won't get stuck in your spam or your junk folder. Now, if you missed receiving the HGLC connections, you can go to our website, holytrinityonline.org, and you will see an HGLC connections button. Now that button will bring you to the latest HGLC connections. And at the top of that page, you'll notice a subscribe button. So no worries if you accidentally unsubscribe, you can resubscribe to it. Now we also have some very exciting news happening in October. We are launching our Strategic Plan 2.0. And when we do that, we're gonna be having a huddle. Now those of you who have been members for a while, remember the vision huddles that we had as part of our 2020 vision. Well, we all know what happened to 2020. That vision kind of went out the door and we had to kind of pivot and change directions. So this 2.0 is going to be a great way to have some outdoor fellowship, you're gonna have some great food, and you're gonna learn about what's next on the horizon for Holy Trinity. Now, because we are planning food, we do want you to RSVP. So you're gonna go again to that website, holytrinityonline.org, find the strategic plan square, and you're gonna click the RSVP button. Now, many hands make light work, and as those of you who have participated in the past, you know that a lot of work goes into preparing for this huddle. So we are looking for volunteers to help set up, clean up, um, food, uh, passing out of the food. So if you wanna volunteer, make sure you click on that volunteer button on that same strategic plan 2.0 square on the website. Now lastly, we last week we voted at a congregational meeting to raise funds for a new digital sign. And thankfully it passed, so yay for that. So we have this great donation tracker where we are going to unveil part of a sign according to how many donations received. So you watch this sign and see how much uh, money we've received and how much we have left to go. So a panel a digital panel is a 12 inch by 12 inch square that is eight hundred and fifty four dollars and you can go all the way down to a minuscule little pixel which costs 66 cents so anywhere from panels to pixels we will gladly accept your donation please mail your donation to the church office and indicate digital sign on your check now we don't want to get it mixed up with our regular offering so speaking of offering there are three three ways in which you can send your offering or give an offering to holy trinity the first one is by mailing it to our church office jamie checks the mail every single day and so don't worry that it's going to be left there overnight and it will be safe and secure second way is through simply giving now you can go on to our website holytrinityonline.org backslash give and you will find a enrollment form for the Simply Giving. Fill that out and it's like an automatic payment that gets done weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, whatever you set up. The last way is through our uh, Vanco Faith app. Now this is the new app that's changing and so um, it's on your phone, you need to download the new app. If you enrolled in our previous uh, Give Plus, I think it was called, uh, Vanco is updating their app, so make sure you download the new one. Well, that's it for me. All I have to say, have a great week. Let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
Yeah.